Good morning. Um, welcome to The View on Africa. I'm Lisa Lowe Vaudren and welcome to our audience here in the room. So um, I'm going to speak today about research we did on uh, Morocco's role in the African Union. Um, and you might uh, wonder why we chose this subject. Basically, Morocco's re-entry into the African Union in January 2017 was quite a momentous uh, occasion. There was a lot of uh, criticism uh, from some quarters about the way Morocco uh, re-entered the organization. And uh, because, of course, um, uh, the conflict or the um, issue of the Western Sahara, uh, that some regions and some countries on the continent feel uh, should move faster in terms of tr uh, finding a solution. And then Morocco, um, in January this year, uh, joined the Peace and Security Council of the African Union, 15 members, uh, and that's also very important and we are eager to see in what way Morocco is going to play a role in the Peace and Security Council. So um, basically, just to start off, um, where does Morocco fit in uh, on the continent? Uh, definitely, Morocco positions itself as uh, an economic heavyweight, so it will also be able to play that role within the African Union. It is, um, in terms of GDP, more or less the fifth or the sixth uh, biggest uh, um, economy. Angola uh, was the fifth biggest, so uh, Morocco is just ahead of Angola, according to the World Bank GDP statistics, uh, and um, ahead of countries like Ethiopia and Kenya that also play a big role in the African Union. So Moroccan investment in Sub-Sahara Africa was one of the motivations also for the continent to embrace its demand to rejoin the organization that it had left in 1983 because of uh, the uh, fact that the African Union had accepted the membership of the Sahrawi uh, Democratic Republic, the uh, SADR. So um, Morocco is definitely, together with South Africa, one of the biggest investors on the continent. Um, by the number of projects, these are the Financial Times um, investment report of last year. Actually, Morocco is just uh, behind South Africa, but when it came to the, the number, the volume of investment on the continent, Morocco was actually uh, in 2016 the biggest investor. Now, that can change obviously in terms of uh, the different projects. Um, so we can see in terms of Morocco's uh, motivations uh, and the potential for growth on the continent, most of its exports still actually go to uh, Europe. It has been, uh, its exports have been directed a lot to the Mediterranean Rim uh, and Europe, but the growth is definitely there in the rest of Africa, mostly in Francophone West Africa. Uh, and the sense is what we got from the research and, and speaking to people in Rabat is that even though politics played a very big role and for Morocco it was a issue of its own prestige um, on the continent and being seen as a heavyweight, as I said, mostly the impetus for this rejoining the African Union was uh, economic motivations. So how did Morocco do this? Uh, as I said, it came t as a big surprise to some AU watchers and people, especially here in Southern Africa, where people have been so aware of the anti-Moroccan sentiment because of its claim over the Western Sahara. Well, King Mohammed VI uh, really did uh, a lot of work, groundwork on the continent. He has been traveling to throughout uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. He said in his speech uh, when he joined, uh, when Morocco joined the AU last year, that he had actually uh, made 46 visits uh, so far in Africa. And unlike many other heads of state, he sometimes spent uh, a whole of two weeks uh, in a country he visited in, in uh, the last part of uh, 2016, just before Morocco joined, uh, countries that were 
also favorable to the uh, Sahrawi cause, like uh, Nigeria, for example, that officially recognizes the, the SADA um, and signed many big uh, investment deals. So economic diplomacy was definitely high on the agenda. Morocco has a lot of phosphate. Uh, there's a lot of criticism around uh, some of this phosphate that is being mined also in the Western Sahara, but be that as it may. So there were big uh, announcements of uh, fertilizer plants in Ethiopia, in Nigeria, and then other places as well. Um, okay, so, uh, just very briefly, my research really wasn't about uh, the Western Sahara conflict, but we can't get away from that because this lies at the heart of the controversy over Morocco rejoining uh, the AU. So uh, there, there are, there's a lot of acrimony and it's been going on for uh, a long time, since the 70s, when Spain, of course, um, withdrew from its occupation of the Western Sahara. It gave Morocco and Mauritania parts of the Western Sahara, and that's where the Polisario Front, the um, organization that fights for the independence of the Western Sahara, was created. Um, with some with support from Algeria, there was uh, um, a war waged between Morocco and the Polisario Front that went on uh, for many years until a truce was signed with the mediation of the um, United Nations. So what is it about? Basically, the Sahrawi people feel that they are the indigenous inhabitants of this region and they um, have a claim over independence. And what's more is it's a principle of the African Union and even the OAU before that um, countries are um, the the let's say the borders of countries are determined by colonial uh, the colonial legacy now that's also been disputed of course in many quarters but um, there's no way getting away from it that the western sahara was a spanish colony while morocco uh, was colonized uh, by the french of course um, so as i said there are many arguments then the africa the united nations agreed on a referendum but to this day this referendum has not been held in short to sum up a very complex uh, um, conflict because there is uh, disagreement over who would eventually be able to vote. If afterwards you have more questions about this issue, of course, talks of now seeming to gain momentum. There's a new UN mediator, Horst Kohler, the former president of uh, of Germany, and we can we can discuss uh, developments uh, uh, later on if need be. So. Um, uh, right. Uh, so definitely in terms of obstacles for Morocco joining the African Union, there was a Western Sahara issue. But I think what a lot of people forget as well is inside Morocco, the king and those around him and the business people had to sell this um, pro-Sub-Saharan Africa foreign policy to the uh, the local population where, um, as this one uh, Afro-barometer um, uh, survey showed Moroccans were not really keen on Mor uh, Morocco joining the African Union. It didn't see really the reason for it. There is a measure of xenophobia and anti-Sub-Saharan African sentiment that is undeniable as well in the country. Uh, there are a lot of migrants from Sub-Saharan Africa in Morocco that use it as a stepping stone uh, towards Europe and many of them also live and work in Morocco. So it's a very contentious issue inside the country. In the end, you know, the king's uh, decision won the day. So last year there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry over what uh, Morocco's role in the African Union will be, specifically around the fact that Morocco for many years have been boycotting any meetings where the Razd, uh, the Sadr, uh, Sahrawi Republic representatives were even here in South Africa. We saw walkouts from Morocco whenever there is a meeting of the United Nations. So uh, last 
last year, um, even after joining the African Union, the, uh, Morocco continued with this attitude. And uh, even here, we had a meeting in Mozambique of the TICAD, the um, Japan uh, Africa meeting where Morocco tried to prevent the Sahrawi Republic's delegates from entering the hall. So there was a lot of anxiety that this would continue and I don't think that made many friends for the Moroccans uh, on the continent. But by November last year there was a big summit in Abidjan between the African Union and um, uh, uh, the EU and with a lot of diplomacy also by the African Union Commission Chairperson Musafaki Mohamed. Finally Morocco agreed to attend the summit. You see him here with uh, Emmanuel Macron from France. He agreed to come and sit in the hall together with the um, President Brahim Kali of the Sahrawi Republic which was a major step and we haven't seen this year so far um, major clashes on that score. So we might just be able, we be starting to see another attitude from Morocco in terms of compromising a little bit on that issue um, that has created a lot of anxiety, as I said. So um, South Africa, as together with Algeria, South Africa has played a big role in supporting the Sahrawi cause for many years. Former President Nelson Mandela, um, you know, had uh, links to the African Union, uh, the uh, African National Congress had strong links with uh, the Sahrawi cause and the Polisario Front, notably its former leader. Mohamed Abdelaziz and uh, South African ministers have been visiting the Tinduf camps where the Sahrawi were in exile. So we were quite surprised to see a meeting um, on the margins of that summit in November last year between former President Jacob Zuma and the Moroccan king. And it was announced that uh, diplomatic relations will be upgraded to the status of uh, ambassador. Because in 2004, when South Africa recognized uh, the Rast under former President Thabo Mbeki, the Moroccan ambassador left. Uh, and so there has been an embassy and there has been a diplomatic uh, presence both in South Africa but in Morocco. So this will be one of the new challenges for the uh, Ramaphosa uh, administration is to give some clarity and some direction to where we are going. The, um, the ANC is very strong that we should continue supporting the Sahrawi and last year there were a number of initiatives, meetings by civil society to support the Sahrawi cause. So we'll have to see how this pans out. As I say, that meeting with the King of Morocco came as a surprise to many. Um, so what does this uh, mean for the African Union? First of all, uh, we come back to the financial issues. Morocco, uh, as I said before, is an economic uh, heavyweight, although not as, as strong as Nigeria, South Africa and Algeria and Egypt on the continent. But uh, it seems from what we can see, it is, uh, um, is very eager to play a strong role in the African Union and to contribute. Uh, as you can see, this is the configuration uh, now at this moment of contributions to the African Union budget, which might change uh, going forward. But uh, Morocco is basically taking the place of Libya, who used to be a big financial sponsor to the AU, and it is now um, also uh, a strong contributor. Um, also, the, um, the Moroccans have been selling themselves as uh, their soft power. I write a lot about that in the report, which uh, you can see online, in terms of selling itself as a hub for international meetings. At the end of 2016, Morocco hosted the... Um, a COP22, which was a very uh, important meeting in terms of the uh, climate change negotiations, many African heads of state attended. So it has been pushing that role. It's also now uh, chairing uh, the African Union's discussions around migration. Um, and uh, so that, that is one of the ways I think that Morocco wants to position itself is that it has that uh, soft power, even if it's not economically such uh, a big heavy weight, although some of the, you know, one of the top five or six on the continent. 
So finally, uh, just about its membership of the Peace and Security Council, which was decided at the 30th AU Summit in January, this is an opportunity for Morocco to um, make a big impact on decision making, especially when it comes to the Western Sahara. We were also quite surprised that at the last minute, Algeria withdrew its candidature for the seat. So Morocco, uh, uh, sorry, North Africa has two seats on the Security Council, Peace and Security Council. Egypt is there with a three-year seat, which should be renewed by January next year. But Algeria and Morocco and Tunisia, who also withdrew, were the candidates for that seat. But at the last minute, Algeria withdrew. There were 16 abstentions, which was not the case for some of the other um, elections. So it says it shows us that there is still a little bit of resistance against Morocco's role on the continent. The fact that it didn't just walk in. Uh, to the Peace and Security Council, even if it was the only candidate. So um, we, what we would, what we are expecting to see is that Morocco is going to try and limit discussions around the uh, Western Sahara to the United Nations, where it has more support than in the African Union. It has France and the U.S. that has sided with Morocco on this issue. Um, and there's also been an attempt by Morocco to reword resolutions on the Afri on the Western Sahara because um, the African Union has also been always been extremely strong in the wording of any discussions around this issue. It um, for example, uh, always referred to the Western Sahara as the last colonial struggle on the continent. Morocco doesn't like that. And uh, so we have seen debates trying to change that wording. Finally, um, there were rumors in July 2016 when Morocco first announced its bid to join the rejoin the African Union that it was going lobby to expel the uh, Sahrawi Democratic Republic public. Uh, that, um, I think, um, there was a lot of resistance uh, against that move. The African Union Constitutive Act has no provision to expel a member. So for that to happen, the AU will have to change its Constitutive Act um, in order to expel the Sadr. It You would need to uh, have a two-thirds majority. Now, if we look at the number of countries that were favorable to Morocco uh, rejoining the AU, it is possible, but some of those countries, notably like Nigeria, that had agreed on Morocco coming back, might definitely not be in favorable of, of expelling uh, the Sada because that would be really um, something unprecedented uh, for the African Union. So Morocco also had a strong bid to uh, join ECOWAS, the Economic Commission, uh, Community for West African States. It was very confident that in December last year it would just also walk in and, and be accepted. That really didn't fly because there was a long, uh, a lot of resistance, especially um, in the. Um, I see my map. There's a mistake there, in terms of. Nigeria. Oh yeah, no, it is there. I just couldn't see the name. So especially in Nigeria, the heavyweight in Western Sahara, uh, in the uh, in ECOWAS, um, opposed uh, Morocco rejoining, and I can go into the details of that. Um, uh, um, later on, but uh, definitely that um, decision has been postponed and we, we just don't see that happening on the short term. 